I've got a nice viewer suggested number theory problem today. So our goal is to find all natural numbers A, B, and C, and by natural numbers I mean positive integers, such that A factorial plus 5 to the B equals 7 to the C. And as it goes with most problems like this, where you're supposed to solve over natural numbers or integers, there's either some sort of obvious infinite family that we'll be able to get at, or there are only a couple of very small solutions to this equation. And as we'll see, there are a couple of small obvious solutions to this equation, and then there are no more. But the trick is proving that there really are no more. Okay, so let's maybe look at this and see if we can guess what the small solutions are. Let's notice that 2 plus 5 equals 7, so that's one of the small solutions. And then 24, well that's 4 factorial. 24 plus 25, well that's 5 squared equals 49, well that's 7 squared. So that's another small solution. And in fact, those are the only solutions, but that's what we have to show. Okay, so let's get those solutions on the board, and then we'll prove that those are the only solutions. Okay, so we got our small solutions on the board. So we've got a equals 2, b and c are equal to 1, gives us the solution which is given by the equation 2 plus 5 is 7. And then a equals 4, b and c equal to 2, gives us the solution based on the equation 24 plus 25 equals 49. Now, we want to use the fact that a factorial is a multiple of every number that is smaller than or equal to a. And that's actually going to be extremely helpful to get rid of a ton of solutions immediately. So let's maybe notice really quickly, if a is bigger than or equal to 5, then that tells us a factorial is a multiple of 5. But we're going to write that as being congruent to 0 modulo 5. That tells us that a factorial plus 5 to the b is also congruent to 0 mod 5. And that's because we're taking b to be a natural number, so that means a positive integer. It cannot be 0. So if you guys want to, on your own, find out what the additional solutions would be if we allowed 0, maybe post in the comments. Okay, but let's say if we had a solution with a bigger than or equal to 5, then that solution would imply that 7 to the c was congruent to 0 mod 5, but that would tell us that 5 divided 7. But 5 and 7 are both prime numbers, and they're obviously not the same prime number, so that would leave us, lead us to a contradiction. So that tells us there, there are no solutions where a is bigger than or equal to 5. Now we're just going to run through all of the other cases. So we've got four more cases to check. The first case is what happens if a is equal to 1. And this case is actually pretty quick. So let's suppose we have a solution. Then we can solve the equation 1 plus 5 to the b equals 7 to the c. But that's actually pretty problematic. And that's because the left-hand side of this equation is an odd number plus an odd number, making it an even number overall. But the right-hand side of this equation is the exponent of an odd number, meaning it is an odd number. But an even number can never be equal to an odd number, so that brings us to our next contradiction. In other words, there's no solution here when a is equal to 1. So far, we've shown that there can be no solution when a is bigger than or equal to 5, and also no solution when a is 1. Okay, so let's jump into the next case when a is equal to 2. So we've already got a solution in this case when b and c are equal to 1. So that means we can assume that b and c are both bigger than 1. Well, really, we would assume that one of them is bigger than 1. But if one is bigger than 1, then the other one also has to be bigger than 1. That's pretty obvious by the setup here. So in other words, what we have left is that b and c are bigger than or equal to 2. Again, because we got this solution already. Okay, but if b and c are bigger than or equal to 2, well then that means that this 5 to the b is a multiple of 25. So that makes it kind of obvious that we could reduce our equation modulo 25. So let's see what that gives us. 
Over on the left-hand side of the equation, we have two factorial, which is two. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, we have that that is congruent to seven to the C mod 25. But now we're gonna use the fact that seven to the C only takes on a handful of values mod 25, and we'll calculate those, and none of those are two. So let's do that real quick. So let's make a chart seven, and then seven C mod 25. I should say seven to the C. So notice if C is equal to one, we get seven. If C is equal to two, we get 49. But let's notice that 49 is one less than 50, meaning this is negative one mod 25. Then let's do seven cubed. But notice that's just gonna be seven times negative one, which is negative seven. And then seven to the fourth power, well, that's just gonna be seven times negative seven, but that's gonna be negative 49. But that means that's gonna be one. But now let's notice that negative one, well, that's gonna be 24 mod 25. Negative seven is 18 mod 25. But notice two is not on this list. And what, once we've hit one, we've reached repetition. So if we take seven to the fifth power, we'll get seven times one, which is seven. And then this will just cycle on and on and on. So that tells us that seven to the C mod 25 is inside the list one, seven, 18, and 24. But importantly, two is not in that list. So that tells us that there is no solution in this setup. And this setup was when B and C were both bigger than or equal to two, again, because we looked at the case when B and C were equal to one. Okay, so we've got two more cases to check. One is when A is equal to three and one is when A is equal to four. So let's clean up the board and do that. So let's see where we are so far. We found these two obvious solutions, which we've talked about already. And then we proved that there are no additional solutions when A is equal to one, two, or it's bigger than or equal to five. Furthermore, along the way, we saw that the powers of seven mod 25 only came from the set one, seven, 18, and 24. And in fact, we're gonna use that again, so that's why I wanted to save it here. So now let's look at the case when A is equal to three. So in that case, our equation looks like six plus five to the B equals seven to the C. So before we jump into our general argument, I wanna notice that there's kind of obviously no solution when B is equal to one or C is equal to one. And I guess that's like and or C is equal to one. But that tells us that B must be bigger than or equal to two but that makes five to the B a multiple of 25, and we can just reduce mod 25 again. So let's see, if we reduce modulo 25, we'll end up with seven to the C is congruent to six mod 25. But again, just like we saw before, six is not a power of seven mod 25, so that gives us a contradiction. So just to reiterate, we check by hand here that B and C equals one don't work. That's pretty easy to check. Notice that six plus five is not a multiple of seven. So now let's move on to the last case. So this is gonna be case four, and that is when A is equal to four. So we already have one solution from that case, which was one of our obvious solutions. So here we're looking for non-obvious solutions. So we can rewrite our equation where a is equal to four. So that's gonna give us 24 plus five to the b equals seven to the c. Now, you probably need to play around with this and there's several ways to do this, but maybe what I would like to do is reduce this mod eight. So let's see what happens if we reduce this modulo eight. Well, 24 is a multiple of eight, so we get rid of that. And then we'll have five to the B is congruent to seven to the C mod eight, but seven is negative one mod eight. So we can write this as negative one to the C modulo eight. But now we can make a similar list like we had done mod 25, but mod eight with powers of five. So let's do that real quick. So we'll have B and then five to the B mod eight. So let's see if 
B is equal to zero, we get five to the zero, which is one. If B is one, we get five to the one, which is five. If B is two, we get five squared, which is 25. But 25 is one more than 24, so that is one mod eight. And then we continue on and on and on. So for odd numbers, we get five mod eight, and for even numbers, we get one mod eight. But let's notice that this negative one to the C is either negative one or positive one. So the only time that this congruence can be solved is when B and C are both even numbers. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this little chart and we'll use that fact to finish it off. So we've just determined in the last case that these exponents have to be even numbers. So I've written them as even numbers. We've got B is two times M and C is two times N. Now, if M and N are equal to one, that gets us back to kind of our obvious solution here. So that means we can assume that M and N are bigger than or equal to two, so that we're really just looking for new solutions. Okay, so let's see what we can do from there. From here, we can take this equation and rewrite it as 24 equals seven to the two N minus five to the two M. Notice that's a difference of squares, so we can factor that. We can factor it as seven to the N minus five to the M times seven to the N plus five to the M. But now we've arrived at a problem because if M and N are both bigger than two, or really, only one of them needs to be bigger than or equal to two. That makes this object right here bigger than or equal to 25. But that means we've got 24 is a multiple of something which is bigger than or equal to 25, but that gives us a contradiction, meaning that there are no more solutions in this A equals four case. So putting it all together, we have no additional solutions from these obvious ones in the case when A is one, two, three, four, or bigger than or equal to five. And that's a good place to stop.